and welcome to the TST 507 widescreen display video. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to program both the color display and the monochrome display. They both program exactly the same, it's just one has a monochrome or a non-color display and then of course we have the color display. So uh, both work with just the 507 systems, not the 510 systems. In the kit you get a few different things. You get a suction cup mount to mount the uh, display onto the window or onto the dash. So uh, you can adjust it, it's fully adjustable and it just snaps over and suctions to the whatever surface you want it to suction to as long as the surface is smooth. So we've got that. We could also now use a USB input to charge these displays. And what I mean by that is you can actually charge them off of your computer if you have a USB uh, input on the computer. So uh, we've got both a adapter, which is a 12 volt to 5 volt adapter, and we also have the uh, USB cord that comes part, as part of the kit. And so, as I said, you can plug this directly into your computer to charge it, or if you have one of those uh, AC uh, adapters that will go into USB that will work as well and we give you the um, cigarette lighter that is an adapter from 12 volts to 5 volts and it just plugs right in. So that comes with the kit. We also give you a second mount uh, with this particular kit and this mount is a rubberized mount that is actually for the dash. So it's a dash cradle I call it and as you saw it just slides in and sits there and it is a non-skid so it'll hold it onto the dash. So those, that's, those are the components that come with this particular system when you buy just the color or monochrome display. So that being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to program this, and we're starting with kind of a clean slate on this one. As you saw in the monochrome, uh, we do have a couple sensors programmed to it so that you can see what it looks like. Um, but with the color display, what we're gonna do is uh, start by getting into the programming mode and you do that every time by holding the set button down and you hold it down until it beeps and then you release it. Okay so now we're in the programming mode and you can select what you want to program. Now it comes up first with high pressure. What we're going to do is start with the sensors. So in order to do the sensors you'll use the plus and minus button that will shift you through the different programs that you can go through. And if you do it five times, you will see at the bottom of the screen where it says Learn ID. Okay, and that's what we want to be in when we program the sensors, Learn ID. So once we get to that point, you hit the Set button. It'll go into that uh, particular mode. And then you'll see all the tires. And your right front tire is normally the first thing you'll see flashing. Okay, so um, normally that's what we use as number one. Number one is the right front number two is the left front and then it goes back over to the passenger side or the right side and it continues from there uh, three four five six okay so um, what we're going to do is we're going to take these sensors and we're going to program a couple of the sensors into this particular monitor this display will work with all of our 507 sensors including the 507 sce sensor that we use in our trucking our commercial line so we're going to use that one first. We'll program that into this monitor first. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the set button one time because we want to program it on that first tire position. So you'll see that all the F's are blinking and we're going to, I'm going to actually push the monitor down to it. The sweet spot on this particular monitor I have found is just to the left of the TSTtruck.com address at the bottom that is stamped onto the monitor. So if I hold it just to the left of that, and then I hit the go button, it grabs it, and we're going to hit the set button to save it. So I had programmed this particular sensor into the other monitor, and that's why that started beeping <laughs> when I reprogrammed this. So you got to be careful to keep things separated a little bit. Usually we say keep your sensors separated about two to three foot away from the one that you're programming. Okay, so that, that one is programmed now into the first tire position. Now what I want to do is I want to hit the plus button and I want to go to the second tire position. Okay, and so what we're going to do with that one is we're going to program a completely different sensor in there. 
um, we'll use one of these cap sensors, the 507 cap sensor, and we'll program that into the second position. So again, you're going to push your set button. It will allow the Fs to flash. Then you're going to push go. And as soon as it grabs it, you immediately push set to save it in that position. So now we've got two sensors programmed, sensor position one and position number two. So we're going to put that aside. Now I'm going to grab um, one of the flow through sensors just to show you that we can program that in as well. So the flow through sensor we're going to put in position number three. Again, we're going to hit the plus. That's going to jump us over to position number three. Now, if I want to skip an axle, which I normally do when I'm programming for a motorhome, and we're going to program it so that uh, you want to do the rear dualies back an axle so it separates it a little bit more on the screen. It looks a little bit better. It's easier to see when you're driving. So in order to do that, all I'm going to do is push the plus button until I get to that next axle back. And you'll see that the sensor uh, or the tire position is now uh, going to the third axle. Not the uh, steer axle, not the second axle, but the third axle back. So I'm going to hold it next to the sensor. I'm going to push the set button so that all the Fs are blinking. Push the go to grab it, grab the code, immediately push set to save it. So now we've got three sensors in there. And you saw I used three different 507 sensors. So that's ready to go. And let's say uh, we've got a fourth sensor. I'll just program this one in just for the fun of it. And I'm going to put that on the inner dual on this side. So I'm going to use the plus button. It's going to the inner dual. When you see all Fs, by the way, on the screen, that means that nothing is programmed to that tire position. So when you get out of this programming mode, you will not see an icon for a tire at that particular position. So most of these tires you see here will not show up only the ones you program. We're going to hit the set button once again. The Fs are going to be blinking. We're going to hit go. And it grabbed the sensor. And we're going to hit set. And that's, a, that's programmed as well now. So now we have four sensors in there. So in order to see what we've programmed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the back button. When I hit the back button, you see where we started from. And then I'm going to hit back again, and that'll bring us to the main screen. Now you'll hear that it's beeping. That's because it's zero pressure, and there is, the sensors are not on the wheel yet. So in order to stop that beeping, you can hit any button, and it'll stop the beeping. And that's what it's supposed to do, because it's showing you that it's zero pressure, and it's showing you the temperature, which I believe here is 72, and it's basically operating correctly. Now. What I would do at this point, once I got all the sensors programmed in, I don't put them on the tires yet. What I want to do is I want to program the high pressure and the low pressure. So we're going to do that next. We are now going to set the high pressure alarm and the low pressure alarm the 507 widescreen display and this is the color display of course and so um, the, what you're going to do is as usual you're going to hit the set button you're going to hold it down until it beeps and then release it so you can find the programming that you want to use and so typically i usually set the low pressure first especially if you have a tire that requires um, your high pressure under 100 you've got to set the low pressure first. It will not allow you to do that because it defaults to the low pressure default, which is 100, and you cannot bring the high pressure lower than the low pressure default, okay? So the simplest way to do it is to start with your low pressure, and that way it'll work every time. So what I'm gonna do is hit the plus button one time, which will bring me to low pressure, and so I'm gonna use the low pressure set. I'm gonna hit the set button again, to get into that mode. And so then you'll see that the front axle is blinking and it's saying that it's low pressure set. So depending on what you have on that particular axle, if you do not have sensors on this axle, say you're just setting this up for a trailer, you're going to use the go button and you're gonna go through the axles and get to the trailer axle. So that is the um, thing that a lot of people are confused about. You do not have to set 
any of the high and low pressure uh, alarms on axles where you have no sensors. It makes no sense to do that because the axle doesn't have sensors. You're not going to get any reading from those particular axles. And notice that we're setting the high and low pressure per axle, not per tire. Okay. We have some tires on this first steer axle, so we're going to set that down. And I'm going to say that um, the tire has 80 pounds in it. So in order to set the low pressure, you're going to set the low pressure at 10% below what your normal pressure is. So um, we're going to, and, and I've been talking so long that it actually timed out, so I'm going to have to hold the set button again to get back into that parameter. And then I'm going to hit my plus button one time to get into low pressure and hit set again. Okay, so we're going to set that up and 80 pounds on the tire. So we're going to go 10% below 72. So we're going to, and on this particular monitor, uh, you can hold the either the plus or minus button down and let it scroll. So there we are at 72. That's the correct uh, pressure for the alarm in this particular instance if you had 80 pounds in your tire. Then I'm going to hit the go button to go to the second axle. Now remember, we didn't put anything on that second axle. But I'm going to hit go again to go to the third axle, and we do have sensors on the third axle. Um, we're going to say that it's 80 pounds all the way around, so I'm going to again use the minus button, and I'm going to scroll down until I see 72, like that. And so that is the last axle that I have that I programmed that I want to set a low pressure for. So to save it, I'm going to then hit the set button. It'll save those, both those readings and it brings me back to low pressure set at the bottom. I'm going to then hit the minus button. I'm going to go back one step, which is high pressure set. And then I'm going to set the high pressures now that we set the low pressure. So I'm going to hit the set button to get into that mode. Again, you see the first axle is blinking. It always starts with the first axle. And if we had 80 pounds, I'm going to put 96 pounds in for the high alarm. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's 20% above what your normal operating pressure is. If you want, if you're in the hot, a hotter state, like down in Florida, down in Arizona, you could put it up to 25% above. And I would suggest you do that. But we're in a kind of a cooler state right here. So let me set this and I'm going to set this to 96. So we're going to let it scroll down and it takes a second or so, but it's nice because this monitor, uh, compared to the old display that we had, um, we can actually let it scroll and we don't have to keep clicking it. So we're down to 96 and that is set correctly. So I'm now going to hit the go button. I'm going to skip the second axle. I'm going to go to the third axle and I'm going to use my negative button and go down to 96 on that one too. And like I say, it takes a second or two, but then we'll be set up with our pressure for our high and our low. There we go at 96. To save it again, you push the set button. It is saved and you push the back button to get back to your main screen so you could see all your information and the tires that you've selected with sensors on them. So that's it. It's pretty easy to program that parameter as well. We've got a couple other things we're going to tell you about in a second. Let's talk about how to delete a tire position and if you maybe coded it in the wrong place on the monitor, um, we can get rid of that. Or if you uh, want to change it and put it somewhere else, um, we can get it deleted from that position and then you can recode it in another position. So it's pretty easy to do that. What we're going to do again is we're going to hold down the set button until it beeps and then release it. Okay, so now we're able to scroll up to just like if you were going to learn a code you go to learn ID and that's five clicks on the plus button. Then you push your set button and that gets into that program. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to the last uh, inner dual 
that I coded in here, and we're going to get rid of that because maybe I don't want it on the inner dual there. I want it. I really wanted it on the other side, on the outer dual. I'm going to um, use my plus button, and I'm going to click it a few times. Now remember, I don't have anything on that second uh, axle, so I'm going to the third axle in my case, the inner dual, and that's the one I want to get rid of. Okay. In order to do that, again, you have to push the set button so that that particular code is flashing. Once the code is flashing, you can then hold down your back button and you hold it down until you hear three beeps and then immediately release it. Okay, you'll see all Fs. If there are all Fs on the tire position, that means that you have no sensor coded to that. Keep that in mind because if you're looking for a tire that you've pre-coded, um, and I'm going to hit the save button there too. You've got to hit the save button after you delete it, uh, or the set button. If you're looking for a particular tire and you see all Fs and you have coded that tire into the scheme of things here in your, in your display, it is not the right tire. You've got to make sure you go to the tire that has a code and then you will have the right tire to delete if that's what you want to do. So we deleted that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the back button twice and then you'll be able to see that that particular tire is gone. So that's how easy it is to delete a uh, sensor. Now, if you want to delete all your sensors, what you want to do in that same position, instead of holding down your, um, your back button for three beeps, you hold down your back button for six beeps. If you do six beeps, it will eliminate all your sensors and you can start fresh again. Um, and you have to do this in the coding mode. Um, so you have to go back into, as I said, hold the set button down till it beeps. Hit your plus button five times. So you're at learn ID. Go into that mode by hitting set. And then you would, what you would do is hit the set button again so you have one sensor uh, blinking. And then you would hold down your back button until you hear six beeps. You'll hear three, it'll pause, and then three more, and it'll ask you if you want to delete everything. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to hit, hit the set button so it's blinking. Now I'm going to hold down the back button until it beeps six times. There's three. There's three more, and it says delete all. And if you hit the set button, it's going to delete everything. Okay? So we'll do that. And now you have a clear slate, and I'm going to hit the back button twice, and you see that there are no sensors now on the screen. So that's how you clear everything out, and you start from scratch. Make note, though, it does not clear out your high and low pressure settings. It just deletes all the sensors that you have programmed in. Okay? So be careful when you do that. You don't want to erase the sensors that uh, you don't want erased. You have to do that individually with the three beeps, but if you want everything erased, hold it down, hold the back button down until you hear six beeps. And when it says delete all, you hit set, it'll delete everything. If you do not want to delete all, then what you do is you just hit the back button and that will get out of that mode. I want to talk about the PSI versus bar and Fahrenheit versus Celsius. We have all of these displays set for Fahrenheit and PSI. So if you want to change that, you want to say you're in a, a different country, uh, say you're in Canada and you want uh, Celsius instead of Fahrenheit, you can do that. And the way you do that, again, you hold the set button down until it beeps. Okay, and then you're going to use your plus button and you're going to scroll over to two, three. You do three times, you could set the PSI or your bar. So you can always set this to bar by selecting that. Once you get into the set, you'll see PSI and bar on the screen. You select it. And then you use your plus or minus button, I, like I did just then, and now bar is selected and I'm going to hit set to save it. I'm going to go out of this using the back button. And you'll see now that we have this 
in bar, not in PSI. So in order to get this back to PSI, now that I've changed it to bar, I'm going to hold the set button down until it beeps and then release it. I'm going to hit the plus button three times where it's going to say set and it's going to show you the PSI and bar. Then I'm going to hit set again to get into that mode. And I'm going to just hit the plus button one time. Now it should be back to PSI. All right, I'm going to hit set to save it. And now when I go back to the main screen, it will be in PSI. Now I'm going to hit plus one more time. That would be four if you're coming right into it off the main screen. Um, and you'll see that it shows uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. For you folks in Canada, if you want to go to Celsius, what you want to do is hit the plus, uh, I'm sorry, the set button, and then you'll hit the plus button. It'll show you Celsius on the screen. Hit set again to save it. And now when you back out, everything will be in Celsius. And we're going to do that. So now you see the temperature instead of 72 degrees, we're looking at about 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, again, to change it, I'm going to go back in, hold the set button down until it beeps. I'm going to hit the plus button four times. And now I'm going to select it by hitting the set. I'm going to change it to Fahrenheit by hitting the plus button once. You'll see now it says Fahrenheit. Hit set to save it. And when I back out, it's going to be back in Fahrenheit and saying 73 degrees instead of 22 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to talk about programming a sensor to individual trailers. This particular uh, display will actually hold up to four different trailers. So you, if you have enough sensors to put on four different trailers, you can actually then scroll through which trailer you want to put, the, uh, put on this display, which one you want to be active, and um, you can then read those along with your towing vehicle. So in order to do that, um, and we get this question quite often. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to show you that it will actually give you an indicator in the middle of the screen for trailer number one, two, three, or four. And when you're initially programming it, if you only have one trailer, be sure when you go into that trailer mode um, and we go over to the trailer that it says number one for each one that you're programming. So you're not hopping from one to two to three to four, and then you'll have four different tires on four different trailers instead of having them on one trailer the way you want it to be viewed on the screen. So in order to do that, we have to go back into Learn ID mode. So we're going to hold down, again, the set button until it beeps, release it. We're going to use the plus button five times. You'll see where it says Learn ID. I'm going to enter that mode by hitting the set button. And now, I'll show you what I mean uh, as far as these trailers go. If I, instead of um, going around with the plus and minus button to the different tires, I can jump directly to the trailer. And if I just hit the, the go button, you'll see that number one appears right in the middle of the screen and the first tire on the trailer, which is on the outer dual, and it's the first axle on the passenger side, is now blinking. So I could code that right now, which I will do. You just, again, hit the set button. You see all the Fs are flashing. Hit the go button with a sensor. As soon as it codes, hit set, and that will save it. So now I've got my first trailer tire on there. Now, the, the thing I wanted to mention is if you keep hitting the go button, you'll see that now it's on trailer two. So you got to be careful not to hit that go button if you're only programming one trailer. If I hit go again, it goes to trailer three. If I hit go again, it goes to trailer four, and then again, back to one. And this is where I want to be. So keep that in mind. Watch, make sure that you have number one on the trailer as you're programming that every time you program. So instead of hitting go, you're going to be hitting the plus button to go through the different tires and the different tire positions, and then programming. Be careful of hitting that go button. You only hit the go button when you hit set. When you hit set, You'll then see the, all the Fs blinking, and then you hit go, 
and it'll grab that code and hit set and then you're good to go but Notice that number one is still on the screen, and that's what you want. If you only have one trailer, you want to make sure you put it on the same trailer back end with all the tires, and uh, don't hit the go button, because if you do, like this, you'll be shifting from trailer to trailer to trailer instead of staying on the number one position for that particular trailer. So that's just some good advice when you're trying to code this. I want to talk to you about manually coding a sensor code into the monitor. In order to do that, some of our um, sensors do have codes on them, like our SCE sensors. Our 507 SCEs have a six-digit code uh, imprinted right on the, the top of the sensor itself. But if you want to go from your old display, the one that originally came with your system, to your new display, your new color display, and a lot of people are doing this, you do not have to go around and hold your display down to the different tire positions and code it in that way. You can actually code it in manually. And sometimes that's a little bit quicker to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that manually. So we're going to hold down again the set button until it beeps and then release it to get into that uh, mode where you can ch choose which programming you wanna do. And then you're gonna hit your plus button six times and you'll see at the bottom it'll say set ID you want to get into set ID so you can hold down or just push and release the set button and then you'll see the first tire is blinking and what you can do is if you have our other display you can hold down the code button on the other display and hold it down till it beeps and then the same tire will pop up the first tire the right tire on the front axle will pop up and you can then see what the code is for that particular sensor, the six digit code. Now I don't have that option right at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna code in one of our SCE sensors here, which I do have a sensor code for, which is, uh, looks like 587F. So I'm gonna use the plus button no, I'm not. I'm actually going to set, hit set to go into it. I keep forgetting to hit set. you got to hit set to go into that mode. And then I'm going to use the plus button. And I'm going to set the first one up to number five. Then I'm going to hit the go button to move to the next digit. I'm going to set that up to eight. Hit the go button for the next digit. I'm going to set that to number seven. And that's what's on. I'm reading it right off of the, uh, the sensor here. So I'm going to go to 7. I'm going to hit go again. Now this says F on this one. It's F72 is the last three uh, digits. So I'm going to leave that F and just hit go. And then I'm going to bring this to 7. And then I'm going to hit go. And I'm going to put the last one to number 2. Now you can use the plus or the minus button. It'll go either way. But I just happen to be using the plus because it's, it's fairly quick either way. So... Once you got that in there, you're going to hit the set button and it saves that six digit code. So this sensor is now coded to that tire position. Now you can use your um, plus button to move to the next tire position, hit set to go into that and the f first F will blink and then you can use um, your plus and minus button to set that six digit code up. Okay. When you're completely done, you hit the set button. Again, that always saves it. You have to save it for each individual sensor in each position. Once you get that done, you hit your back button and you hit it twice. And now you'll see that we have a sensor on that front right, which is this SCE 507 sensor that I just coded. And it, it, that was pretty easy to do, and it's pretty quick. And sometimes it's better than having to, especially if you're older like I am, to kneel down at each of the tire positions and have to code this in. So if you have the, the original monitor and that is working, you can set up this display pretty easily by going through the coding of your old one, setting it up the exact same way on your new one, and then when you're done, 
you hit the set button, of course, you hit the back button twice, and it'll show you the same configuration that you had on your previous display on the new display. There is a feature on this display that allows you to rotate your sensor to a different tire position. In order to do that, you hold down your set button like you would normally do. When it beeps, you release it. Use your plus button and click seven times. In the lower corner here, you'll see rotate tires. Hit set to go into that mode. Now, I happen to have the tire that I want to move on the second position, which is on the left side of the uh, steer tire, of the steer axle. So I just clicked the plus button to get to it. I'm going to hit set. Now the, the tire that I want it to go to is blinking, which is number one. And so I'm going to hit set once again. So that now transferred the code from my left front tire to my right front tire, the number one position. So in order to check that and make sure it worked, we're going to hit the back button two times. And now you'll see, instead of having the tire on this side appear, it's now moved the code to the front right tire. And that's where I wanted it to begin with. default temperature for this particular display is 158 and that's good for any tire that's out there that you're going to have on any of your vehicles. The reason we have it at 158 is because between 170 and 200 a tire can get so hot it will actually blow. So 158 is a good early warning uh, number. So if you want to change that number I'll show you how to do that uh, or if your display came with a number other than 158 and you want to bring it back there uh, it's very easy to change that. So you hold down, again, hold down your set button until it beeps and then release it. And you're going to push your plus button two times to get to your temperature display. Uh, once you get to your temperature set, your high temperature set, you want to push the set button to get into that program. Now, in this case, it is correct, 158. So I can change that by using the plus button and go up or I can use the minus button and go down. And I'm gonna go down to 158 again. Whoops, overshot a little bit there. So 158 is where we want you to keep that high temperature alarm. And once you change that and get it back to 158, you press your set button to save it, and then you press your back button two times, and that'll bring you to the main screen and it'll be set properly. I'd like to give you some tips with this particular display, and this will work actually uh, on our old display as well. If you want to see a particular tire reading, you do not have to wait for uh, this uh, display to rotate through those tires on your screen. You can actually manually take and use your plus and minus button, and you can actually switch to different sensors by just hitting the plus button and it'll stay on that sensor for about 10 seconds as opposed to five seconds when it's doing this uh, automatically. You can go use the plus or you can go with the minus and go back so you can look at a particular sensor. The other thing you can watch here is for the, the battery indicator. Now the battery indicator on this particular display actually is telling you the battery uh, the strength in this display, not on your sensor itself. That indicator that's on this side is showing you the battery for this display. And when it gets down to one bar, you really need to plug it in and recharge it. Uh, it'll go about five to seven days on a charge, as long as it's got a full charge to begin with, which takes about four hours to do. Okay, now it does have an indicator on here for your sensor battery as well. The only thing about that is if you have the monitor shut off 
and the sensor is actually failing or dying because the battery is low, then you may miss that symbol because it's only available for about two to three days because the battery at the very end of its life in the sensor will throw out a signal that says change the battery and that's another indicator that's on this side at the top of the screen. So you may or may not see that. If your sensor does not read properly or if it's completely blank, you might want to just take it apart, change the battery, especially if it's been in service for a year to a year and a half, change the battery out and that should bring that sensor back and you'll get all your readings again. Another note, when you change the battery in the sensor, you do not have to reprogram it into the monitor, okay? The battery um, is a separate entity. All it does is it uses the sensor as a transmitter, and the transmitter in the sensor does not affect the programming in the display. So make sure that once you change out the, uh, the battery in the sensor itself, don't reprogram it. It should be fine. If it does not read after you do that, you may want to try to reprogram it, but that is um, something that you don't normally have to do. Another tip for you with this particular system is if you are getting readings from your sensor, a particular sensor on one of your tires that is intermittent. Say you start out your trip, everything is working fine, and then you get about an hour into it and the sensor will drop out. That may be your valve core in your valve stem of that particular tire. What happens is with those valve cores, a lot of them will shrink when they get hot. So if it's barely making contact with our sensor and, and giving you just a little bit of air pressure, it may be possible to increase that air pressure by taking a valve core tool and unscrewing your valve core until it just starts leaking in that particular tire and then screw it back in just a little bit so that it will stop leaking but yet that brings that valve core out in the valve stem and when you put on your sensor it'll actually push that little plunger that's in that valve core farther down getting more air pressure in your sensor and that usually will alleviate that problem. So you could try that and see if that will fix the problem if you're not getting any reading from that sensor or you're getting intermittent readings. Another thing that you might want to consider is if you have a unit that you're towing or your motorhome is over 34 foot in length, you may want to put in a repeater and you'll need to have a 507 repeater if you have this system because we have a 510 repeater and a 507. This of course is the 507 system. You may want to put a repeater in and that may el eliminate some problems with dropout as well. And that will um, sometimes affect the front tires of a coach as well as your back tires and your vehicle that you're towing, not just the farthest tire away. So something you want to keep in mind and maybe need to uh, put in if you don't have a repeater and the repeater actually is hardwired into a 12 volt system. So those are some tips for you that uh, you might want to consider if you're having some dropout problems. The final tip I will give you, um, if you're having dropouts in your tires and they're not uh, displaying on your display correctly, or if they're intermittent, you may want to check and see if you have an indoor outdoor thermometer. Um, if you do, some of those thermometers are actually on the same frequency that our sensors are on, which is 433 megahertz. If it is 433 megahertz, then that uh, indoor outdoor um, thermometer could be interfering with your signal strength from our sensors forward to the display. So you may want to take the batteries out of both the uh, unit itself that's on your wall, the receiver, and the transmitter that's transmitting those uh, temperatures, whether it's in your refrigerator or outdoors to give you outdoor temperature. Take the batteries out, see if that will solve your problem with the uh, dropout. Um, that's something that happens quite often. The other thing you can do to eliminate it permanently, if that is the problem, you can uh, get rid of that particular system that you have on 433 megahertz, 
I actually sold mine, put it out on the picnic table of one of the RV parks we're in, and somebody bought that because they didn't have our sensor system in at the time. And uh, you can get a 915 megahertz system, which looks identical, performs very well, and that will eliminate that problem permanently for you if you want an indoor-outdoor thermometer. I wanted you to see what it looks like when you have all your sensors programmed into the display and it's reading properly. As you see, it cycles through, which it should do, from one tire to the next in that particular pattern where it starts on the right front, to the left front, to the right um, rear outer dual, then inner dual, then to the left inner dual, and outer dual on the left hand side. So that's what it looks like when it's programmed properly and it's working properly. And you'll, you can now see what it looks like um, as far as your tire temperature and your tire pressure goes for each individual tire. So the tire that's blinking is the one that's showing you the temperature and pressure. Then it will move on to the next one. And as I said before, if you want to go to a specific tire, you can push the plus or minus and manually go to that tire. If you would like more information on our TST widescreen display, either the monochrome or the color display, you can give us a call at 770-889-9102 and we'd be happy to help you either purchase one of these units or with some technical support. You can also go to our website at www.tsttruck.com. That's T-S-T-T-R-U-C-K. Dot com. Thanks for watching.